it is that time again. Another fireside chat with me, Angelica Sherry, and the fabulous Azure D. Osborne Lee. How did what brought you to the Father's Time family? Oh, well, you know, I met Kevin R. Free. Kevin R. Free <laughs> does it again. <laughs> Kevin. I met Kevin R. Free. Mm-hmm. Um, probably the first year I moved to New York City. Um, Which was? was 2009. Okay, so. The first time I moved here, you know, because things get dramatic. you got to leave, pack up your car, drive away, then you come back three months later. Right. Everybody's like, welcome back. Right. <laughs> I saw the full-length show last year. Lord's um, Resistance by Camille yes. Darby. Saw it. Right. Uh, I was going to come see the 10-minute plays, but then I got, you know, the cold that just wouldn't quit. So. Yeah, I came down, saw the show, and then... <clears throat> Excuse me. Is that the same situation right now? Should I not? The cold situation? Oh, no. Should I'm on, I? I'm on the... The rise. I, had, I didn't take my vitamin C. Anyway, Kevin R. Free um, sent me an email this year and was like, yo, did anybody send you this uh, this photo album and the call for plays? Of Alex Harsley's photographs. Yes. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I looked at them and was like, this is where I want to be. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, magic was made. Beautiful. Well, can you so. talk about the photo that you chose? Oh, I... T- I didn't really choose one photo. I cheated. So I <laughs> You hear that? <laughs> and admittedly. I kind of chose three, but then I thought that's a little outrageous, so I narrowed it down to two. Um, but one was this photo of the desert, and it looked like two women walking through the desert. Uh, so my play, which is called The Sandbox, mm-hmm. um, is primarily about two sisters, and so I was inspired by that. When you come... To see my play. When you come. When you come, you will see how both of those photos inspired the work. I mean, you've evoked the backyard very poignantly, if I may. Yeah. You Cute. say that. Cute. I won't say very much, because you, you're coming. So, so what really happened was, it was the day of the deadline. I had a good two and a half hours. <laughs> I cried a little bit. <laughs> I uh, texted a couple of friends. They were like, you got this. I got some Grubhub, some cheese fries. <laughs> I was in my bed with my cheese fries on my phone. Num, num. I was just like, oh. <laughs> so, and that's, that's really Look the first draft. Look at what beauty came out of cheese fries and tears. Uh, so, I realized that I once again wrote a play with no men in it, which happens. No offense. I'm okay with it. Nothing personal. It's okay, men. It's okay. You can come through after. Yeah. Come to the show. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then we'll write buy me a drink. Are there certain particular, like as a playwright, do you feel like you see your work taking on a certain voice or things that you're normally drawn to, or even just in the moment of right now? Yeah. I mean, I think it's interesting that um, you know you asked me how I got to the process of writing the play, mm-hmm. and I've gone through a, th- a few different processes now. I've had some residencies, etc., some deadlines, and so I'm like, okay. <laughs> no inspiration like a deadline. Right? But it's like, how do I get to the, the point of writing? Right. Um, and it's really different for every play. But the one thing that I do know from like all the education that I have, all the writing assignments, etc., is that... Uh, there's always some, like, bargaining phase, you know, some desperate phase where I'm just mm. like, how do I get out of this? <laughs> Should I fake my own death? <laughs> but the uh, the longer I've been writing, I mean, the more I know that that's going to happen, it'll pass, and then I'll get to the, mm-hmm. the good stuff. So I just kind of wh- slide on through it. You know, that, that phase gets shorter and shorter. So mm-hmm. maybe instead of two hours trying to figure out how I can do <laughs> something, it's like ten minutes, you know, or maybe five minutes or... I just order those cheese fries from Grubhub and <laughs> every time you know text my friend who's like you're brilliant do it and I'm like okay you know and and, and get to it. Well, I think the thing that it's really about for me at least is um, writing is really about surrender, which I'm not mm-hmm. good at because I'm a control freak. <laughs> so I'm just like what's happening? I don't want to. Okay, and, you know, mm-hmm. so that moment where I can really just let go and trust the process and trust that you know like the impulses are going to come through, um, that I've got the stuff so to speak. Here's the thing. Okay, look. Look, people. I know that January and February, they roll around and you get all depressed, you're stuck in your house, all the fun winter holidays are gone. You need to come on out and see your family. Bring your Capricorn friends, you know, tell them it's about them, (laughs) you know, (laughs) those early Aquariuses. Bring them out, too. Um, No, seriously, if you don't come, you're going to miss out because there's brilliance like the Sandbox and so many other beautiful pieces of art. They're going to be going up. Some soul food on the stage. Okay. Come get you a plate. 
Okay? Okay, before it's gone. And then leftovers. Bye.